Look, let me let, let, let me tell you this. You see, the way we are assessing and analyzing this issue, I say it's a problem we cannot solve as a country. When you are elected as a leader, you are not elected to lament over a problem. You have to solve a problem. And it is because there are problems to be solved. That's why people are elected into office. I cannot imagine myself presiding over an executive position and seeing banditry without being in the front line to fight it. Take for example now. The bandits that come into Kaduna State are mostly not from Kaduna State. Because if you have the locals from Kaduna to uh, Brinangwari is where this Kuriga is located. And before then, you have some villages like Labi, like Udawa, like uh, other villages that are around, uh, along that path. What stops us from recruiting young men who are from those villages, either into the police force or the army, and then deploying them back to their own villages to take on these bandits? The locals know their terrain, they know a stranger, they know every movement. But the point is that they need a channel to which they can be supported, they can be backed, they can be funded to be able to take on these terrorists here. From Kaduna to Abuja, there are about 37 villages. When you move out of Abuja, you have Zuba, you have Madela, you have Jere, you have Katari, you have all these villages that are there. I cannot remember any time when there is any recruitment in any of our own security agencies where those villages have been told to, 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 to bring in their young people and join uh, the agencies. It's not, there, there is none. So the locals, the peasants, the farmers, the people in the villages can fight these terrorists. If not, they can fight them physically. They can provide the information that the government or the security agencies need to be able to fight. Without information, you will not be able to fight. Mm -hmm. Any bandits, group of bandits that are crossing along Karuna Abuja Road, the villagers know them, they, can, they know who they are, but you need to be backed, you need to be supported, you need to be reinforced for you to now say you are not going to side with the bandits, you are going to side with the government. If you are known to be an informer of bandits, you will get in trouble with the government. And if you are not to be an informant of the government, you get in trouble with the bandits. So it is about winning them over and using them to fight this battle. A nation of 224 million people cannot be held hostage by bandits that are not less than five to 6,000 in this country here. We are bigger than that as a nation. We can achieve okay. that. Who are they? This, are the, this is a battle we have to fight. It is the, 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 the challenge of our era. All right, then. And let me bring uh, Larry Suraj back on. Um, Larry Suraj, we're looking at what the senator has just said, uh, the, a, a better integration between the people themselves who are the victims. Uh, you, you integrate them, uh, you enable them. Uh, that whole idea, it's your comment on that. Because it seems a very logical way to go. And what, why hasn't it been done before? Because there are experts that will know very well what the senator is saying. No, I, I think it is very critical, and that is why I mentioned earlier that it is important where we share knowledge and experience. And I completely agree uh, with the senator that we always just pretend as if this uh, problem is intractable, uh, basically because we are not sincere about finding solutions to them. Uh, you will remember how the civilian JTF supported you know, the fight against Boko Haram uh, in in uh, in in Boronu State, and how that really assisted in bringing the situation uh, to a very large extent under control, uh, where you don't have that commitment on, on the part of the state. And and for me, it's important that we must always put this uh, um, in 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 context uh, when we want to address it. The truth is very clear. Uh, there's no chief executive. There's no governor that can actually escape, you know, liability and complicity in the whole of this case. It is either uh, the governor would also be part of, uh, of the criminality that is happening in the state, or the governor is deliberately just avoiding responsibility or deliberately dealing with the issues. 
Uh, so uh, that is where we need to actually start yep. holding our government uh -oh. to account as responsible if you want to have solution uh, to the problem. Then the, uh, the other thing is we, we, this, this engaging the community is almost just like one phase of it. And that is likely to fail if we don't have the software support to it. So where are they okay. reporting? Who are they reporting to? So if you still have some of these uh, compromised uh, people, uh, managing either the security or, or the uptakers uh, for the activities of uh, of the communities, then it's still going to just be exposing the communities and also the people to unnecessary danger. So the security system, and when you have corruption that is also pervading in many of these places, so the cost and uh, allocated fund to support this still stolen by public officials or politicians. All you will just see in the news will be the setting up of this uh, several uh, joint task force, uh, civilian, whatever. Uh, but the whole resources still doesn't get down there. And it doesn't cost so much. Like I mentioned, imagine the amount of vehicle that would have been used to, to convey the 287 children that were yeah. kidnapped. Yeah. 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 With the state that you have, just a couple of drones could have tracked and monitored the movement. And so if you have the chances of all the... There's no state government that will say it doesn't know you know, uh, the roads and connection okay. that you have from one state uh, okay, Larry. to the other. So uh, the, uh, the thank thank you, Larry. Let me bring in uh, a caller, uh, Mr. George in Ikeja. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yorick, and morning. greetings to our two guests. Yes. Uncle Yorick, the president uh, has said that he's working on a new security strategy. So what we are discussing can only be you know, some kind of suggestions in, in that uh, policy formation. For me, the northern governors and indeed all governors should task the traditional uh, rulers in their domains on insecurity. The experience, the recent experience in Delta State shows that traditional rulers know the criminals in their midst and they hold information from our security forces. The security outfit that the uh, northwestern governors and indeed some other governors are setting up is uh, is good. I believe I see it cascading to state police that the government is already talking about. Okay. But the question is, can they fund the state police adequately? Hmm. The, the criminals that the state police men are going to be dealing with carry heavy arms. Do these state governors have the money? to buy sophisticated arms. Okay. We did not, we did not I hear you. assembly also pass law that we enable these uh, state uh, uh, security office to... All right, then. Well, thank you very much, Mr. George. Uh, coming back to you, Senator, with your closing words on, on this, uh, you, you said very clearly what the responsibility of governments 